guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Katie. If you're new here and today I'm going to be showing you how I redecorated my entryway. So a little bit of backstory. Our house that we currently live in is started as a one-story single man home. The man who lived here before us had a completely different style than what we did. It was totally closed off so we opened up a lot of the spaces, added a second story, and I absolutely love how it turned out. However, it is laid out a little bit differently than a lot of homes and there isn't an entryway type area. So I really wanted to find a way to add that and I'm so excited about how this turned out. We added um, some shiplap and some other like DIY type of decor pieces. I'll show you all of that in this video. If you haven't checked out any of my previous decorating videos, I do have a playlist of all of those and I will link those in my description box down below. I also wanted to let you guys know that I recently started an Instagram. It's called The Blue Farmhouse Company and the reason that it's called that is because my husband and I also recently started an Etsy shop and that's the name of our Etsy shop. So on the Instagram, I share decorating new items in our Etsy shop and also just a little bit about family life. I just had it for like a week and I don't really know what I'm doing yet, but I would love to have you guys follow me over there as well so we can chit chat. Thank you all so so very much for watching and let's go ahead and get right into this video. So I'm going to be making an entire entryway hanging piece of wall decor. I'm not sure what else to call it but this shelf is going to be part of it. So I picked up this shelf from Goodwill for four dollars and it wasn't really my style completely so the first thing that we did was use this rubber mallet. This rubber mallet actually came from Dollar Tree so it was only one dollar and just removed the ends of this shelf since it just wasn't really what I was looking for and also removed the boards of the shelves from each other because this um, shelf was a little bit too long for our entryway, so we cut it down to the size that we were looking for. The end pieces of the shelf were also not exactly the style that I was going for, so we started off by cutting these in half, and then that was still a little bit too large, so after we had spray painted them black, then I just drew on them um, using pencil and made an L design, and then um, my husband cut these using the miter saw, and I feel like this just suits the style of the design so much better and for the color of the shelf we just used a spray paint in mink. To attach the L-shaped pieces of wood to the shelf we used a nail gun and I think this creates a nice finished look. To create the back of the wall hanging we used eight two by fours and then used the same nail gun to place a small piece of wood over the back of these boards to help them stay together and just create stability. And to paint these, I actually used milk paint and I used white. Usually I love chalk paint, but this provides a really good coverage and I actually just used a, I just rolled it on and I did do a couple coats, but you honestly, you might not even have to because it's such nice paint. So let me know if any of you have tried milk paint and what your thought is on it. I do think it's very similar to chalk paint, but I really like it and I'll probably use it for future projects. So what I should have done first was paint all of these boards black because after I had painted them white I decided that I wanted to distress the boards a bit and the wood beneath was so light that when I did that you could barely even tell. So we spray painted a few areas and I, it kind of looks like a Dalmatian at this point and let that dry and then repainted over the black areas with the white milk paint and then after that was dry or almost dry, I was like tacky, then I used a wet paper towel to wipe some of the paint off to create a little bit of a distressed look. Next, we attached the shelf onto the white pieces of wood using a drill and screws. I picked up four dish drying mats from Dollar Tree and I'm going to be making some DIY pillows out of these. I am 100% aware that I am not the first person that's used the items to make pillows from Dollar Tree, but I thought these turned out really cute and I love the sunflower design. So I laid both of the dish drying mats out and then I put hot glue on one side of the inside of the mat on like the brown side, the side you don't want to be seen. And then I put the other dish drying mat on top of the hot glue and then applied pressure until I could no longer feel any heat from the hot glue. If you don't want to do this, you could also just put something heavy on the side. But the main thing that I'm going to say with this is just move slowly and allow each side to dry thoroughly before trying to move on. At first, I tried to do this too quickly and it ended up peeling up some of the glue. 
Also, if you don't like hot glue, I would recommend using a stronger type of glue. There's all different types of glues out there on the market, but for filming purposes, hot glue is the quickest, and I am the type of person who likes to switch up my decor a lot, and these cost me $2 to make, so if something happens to them or I want to take them apart, it's not the biggest deal to me. But if you do want this to last, obviously use a different type of glue. So I repeated this process on all four sides and then at the very top I left a small hole where I could fit a bit of stuffing in there and you can just purchase stuffing or you can use an old pillow that you already had. I happen to have an old decorative pillow that wasn't really my style anymore so I just took that one apart and then put stuffing inside of these dish drying mats. And I thought these turned out so cute and they were perfect to decorate the area underneath our wall hang. After you have the pillow as full as you want it with the stuffing, then once again use whatever glue that you're using to close the pillow together and apply pressure on that area until you're sure that it's really well adhered or dry. I also picked up three books from Dollar Tree. I love using books in my decor and I feel like there's so many different things that you can do with them. So the first thing that I did with these was remove the covers. And then after the covers were done, I tried to distress them using some tea and I've read so many different things and seen videos on how people used coffee or used tea and I didn't see quite as much like color change as what I wanted to. So I let those dry and then I took them outside and I tried to light some of the corners on fire and then I just rubbed some dirt onto the books. I did see someone do this in a blog at some point. I mean, I know there's about a million different ways to distress books, but I just wanted them to have a little bit of a yellowed look. And I feel like this did eventually work, but you're getting dirt on your book. So if that bothers you, I would suggest maybe using some watered down brown paint. I feel like that would have turned out really well. And next time I might try that instead. After the shelf was in place, then we brought the entire wall hanging inside and then measured our wall where we want to place the wall hanging. And then my husband found studs in the wall because this was a little bit heavy, so I wouldn't recommend just like screwing it onto the wall in any random place or nailing it or anything like that. I would definitely recommend finding where the studs are. So after that, then we hung up the wall hanging and we also placed a sign on this wall hanging and we made this sign and we will be selling similar type of items in our Etsy shop. I will list that down below if you're interested. And we just centered that up with the wall hanging. Then I found these little hooks at Hobby Lobby. These were kind of expensive. You can get them cheaper off Amazon, but this whole idea came to me like on a whim. I'm not a good plan ahead person, I guess but you can order these way cheaper um, off of Amazon. Next was the fun part, which is decorating this area, and I got this little bag at Goodwill. I love Goodwill lately, and unfortunately, this bench underneath, it came from a craft fair last fall, and I love it. I wish that I had somewhere that I could suggest getting it from. I picked up this globe from Walmart. I kept looking at Goodwill to try to find a globe because I swear I've seen some there before but it's like when I actually need something I can never find what I truly need and I feel like that added such a cute touch. So these books are the DIY that I made and then the little tiny vases and greenery came from Hobby Lobby. Whenever I'm decorating I have to take a step back to make sure that I like everything and typically have to rearrange it. It's really hard to see how everything looks when you're right like up on top of it. Let me know if I'm alone or if other people do this as well. So this tiny bird cage, this came from Walmart. I got this around fall time last year, so hopefully they still have something similar and it was not very expensive. I want to say that it was around eight to ten dollars. On top of the books, I placed some beads. I made these recently in a DIY video and they're probably my favorite decorative piece right now. I got the beads from Dollar Tree and I just love how they look and just the rustic element that they add to decor pieces. So the final touch was just this little straw hat that I picked up at Dollar Tree. So I will give you a final close up of how everything looked and that is going to be the end of today's video. I'm so excited. I feel like this added a ton to the entryway and I just am really loving how it all turned out. So don't forget to follow me on Instagram if you would like to. My Instagram name is The Blue Farmhouse Company and I will talk to you all in my next video. Bye guys. Hope you have an amazing day.